We abide by COVID safety guidelines. We will not touch each other even during greetings or shalom. We will keep six feet apart from other households and we will hum along robustly, but not sing. The choir sings mask with KN95s and socially distanced. Please remain seated at the end of worship until, our, until your row is dismissed by the ushers. Our presence here in person indicates our intention to abide by these loving guidelines. A special welcome to everyone worshiping with us via Zoom or Facebook. We are so glad to be here together. Post joys and concerns in the chat with joy or concern in caps as the first word. If you're in the sanctuary, please text your joys and concerns to our prayer phone. And here is the number. It is 475-261-2230. Once again, 475-261-2230. If you don't text like me, there are slips of paper which the ushers will do if you raise your hand and they'll gather them and pass them back up to me. Remember that this is a public forum. Consider privacy when using full names. For our offering to support our ministries and mission, there are offering plates by the entrances. Two and back, I feel like a... <laughs> to receive your offering as we enter or leave the sanctuary. May also make an offering virtually or by mail. Thank you. Now to some announcements. There's a lot going on. Please read your weekly NMC email carefully and get involved. Here are some of the highlights. And I'm going to ask Roberta to stop up. Join us. Good morning. Roberta Hanlon here. Um, uh, speaking on behalf of the three team leaders in our um, harvest, the craft fair, harvest like, craft fair was taking place this coming Saturday. It's almost upon us. Linda Young is in charge of our cookies, and Melissa Blunden has Karen's Cafe, and um, Christine Hopkins has the vendors. And I think we have 27 um, crafters signed up, so doing great. Doing a great job on the cookies. We've exceeded our goal, our unofficial, our official goal of 2,500 but please, you can never have too many cookies. And because we, so um, what we do need for the cookie um, team is we need people to either come in Friday afternoon after three or before um, nine o'clock to help Linda set up the plates of cookies and display. So we only have one person, she has one helper so far, she could use at least one, one or two more. Um, we have, we're doing, um, we, ha we also have soup um, as part of the um, craft, um, how do you call it? Karen's Cafe, and we've done a great job, except we need one more person to make chili and one more pot of minestrone soup. So um, if you can do that, um, come see me. I have the clipboard here. I'm not gonna pass it around this time. Um, and the other big thing that we really need is uh, oh, cookie walkers, all right? So all these great people are gonna be coming in and we have to fill and they point and we fill up the boxes and we really need some more help in the cookie walkers. So um, especially starting at 11. So Linda could use some help there. And then set up Friday afternoon. We need some, especially people who can move around some furniture. Um, and then after the fair that closes at two o'clock on Saturday. 
I think I have everything. So if you can sign up for any of those, I'll be standing around here right after worship. Thanks. Thank you, Roberta. So would you like our announcements to be a little shorter before worship each week? You can help. We can tell how many people open the constant contact email. So we know when you haven't opened it and that we need to make announcements. So if you'd like to have fewer announcements, the easy way to do it is open the email you get every week. We'll see the percentage of people that open and we'll know if we've reached critical mass and don't need to bother you now again. Simple and yeah, thank you. Okay, but um, I do need to make a very important announcement, which is next week, the first um, Sunday of December, we are doing a super exciting, new, amazing thing. And that is that Jenny Monroe is going to do the Christmas Carol story for us, a Christmas Carol in worship as our worship service. So she will be a one woman show of the Christmas Carol and you will be amazed and moved to see Ebenezer Scrooge in a way you've never really understood him before. And believe me, it is relevant to the gospel and the Christmas story. So please be here, bring friends. We will take a free will offering to offer to um, Jenny for the amazing hours of work she's put into preparing this. We will also celebrate communion together. It will be a longer Sunday than usual, not a lot longer. Um, maybe we won't have announcements because you will have read all of your stuff. And um, That'll shave off 20 minutes. So, <laughs> um, but it, it's going to be amazing. And so please plan to be here. And um, there will be an intermission where we will have a cookies and cider communion of sorts. And we will bless our food pantry because, of course, a big part of that story is about an empty table and coming to fill a table for one another. So um, we'll be talking about that. And I just want to make sure it's on your radar. We'll send you an email again tomorrow and it'll be on Facebook. So you can't miss it. Please share it. And we can't wait. And thank you, Jenny. And thank you, Heather. A few more announcements. If you uh, would like to join us, uh, we're putting together a nativity platform out front after service. Look for Tom and I plan to be there too. Loaves and Fishes, a new champion for our local food pantry support, will launch the new plan in the mission moment and celebration next Sunday, December 5th. For that event, we asked three items to be collected, pancake mix and syrup, tuna and mayonnaise canned soups. Uh, our refugee resettlement, the home in West Haven for our family of 11 is coming together. Once the family arrives, there may be more needs for clothing, books, toys, school supplies, etc. We'll keep everyone posted. And finally, the fiscal finale, Falala Follies, will be a lot of fun. You won't want to miss worship on the 12th. Our congregational budget meeting will follow immediately after worship. And now we'll be transitioning to worship. We're so glad to have you all here with us this morning. Your presence enriches our time together. I hope worship will be meaningful and inspiring to you and connect you more deeply with our, your own heart, one another, and with our creator. And now I'll give you Junior Deacon Nick. Loving God of all, on this first Sunday of Advent, we have gathered again in this sacred place, full of hope that ad the Advent and Tanaka seasons bring. Some of us are here for the first time, some gathered in generations. Some are in person in our sanctuary, some are gathered virtually on screens and close in heart. Thank you for welcoming us at all at home. In this moment, gathered together, we tune our hearts to you. All of us welcome, all of us safe in your arms. As we worship this morning, we may create here, in all the ways we are here, a circle of love, ever expanding, ever growing, a place of wisdom, a place of connection, a place of hope and grace. And may we know that you who gather us are among us and within us and between us as we worship, love, and grow together. Amen. So this year, as I mentioned, we have a beautiful convergence between the kindling of the Advent and Hanukkah's first lights. This year, 
more than ever. As we kindle the first flames this morning and this evening, let us remember the light's overarching message. There is always a miracle around the corner and even the most bleak situations, and we have seen some this year, can become increasingly brighter with a little hope and a little love and a little faith. So as we add another flame to our wreath and our menorah, each Sunday of Advent and each night of Hanukkah, we find hope in the gift of growing light, spiritual and literal, that each one brings. So I'd like to invite Miles forward to light our first lights and Dina <clears throat> to come with. You know, I grew up in a, in a pretty strict Jewish household and uh, we celebrate a Hanukkah and, and I have such wonderful memories of it with my sisters and parents and, and lighting the candles and, and saying the prayer uh, in, in Hebrew, you know, which, which we learned in Hebrew school. And I thought I would share that with you now. I'm going to say a word that you can just say it back. They're going to be all, uh, they're gonna, all going to be Hebrewish for a little bit. <laughs> if that's all right. Okay. Baruch. 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 Asha. Asha. Adonai. Adonai. Elohim. Elohim. Melech. Melech. Ha'olam. Ha'olam. Ba'asher. Ba'asher. The Mitzvotah, the Shivanu, the Chadlik Nair, the Chadlik Nair, Shell, Shell, Hanukkah. I think we have some blatant Jews here. We've got all the Chayas and all that cool stuff, you know, it's a very guttural language, but uh, it's beautiful nonetheless. So I'm going to light the candle and, and have Dina. Uh, also light one of the purple advent candles. Am I supposed to light the light? <laughs> See, we wait in hope for the kindling of the light. Uh, <laughs> they just don't make Hanukkah candles the way <laughs> I get mine in ShopRite. Okay, you want to take that and, and light one of the purple candles? Careful. Oh. Mm. I'm trying. You got it. I'm trying. Okay. Ah, ah. And then she does that. Uh, there you go. And like Heather said, this is a really beautiful conversion. It doesn't happen all the time. Hanukkah is celebrated all, all over the place because it, it, the, the old Hebrew calendar is lunar as, as opposed to ours, which is solar. So, so it can happen at any time. And I'm, I'm going to have Dina uh, read the first part of this reading. Starting right there. Oh, I have my glasses. And one of the cool things for me as, as, as an old Jew, Emphasis on old, and is that my wife is not Jewish, and and yet we would light the candles at every Hanukkah from well for the last twenty years that we've been married, and uh, every year she gets better at the pronunciation. <laughs> it's not easy. It's not easy, uh, and uh, but she's doing beautifully. Go ahead. Okay. okay, both Hanukkah and Advent are about hopeful waiting. This is not one of our strong suits. We are far more accustomed to instant gratification. That's right, <laughs> that's true. That purposeful waiting. The pandemic has helped us realize that we do not control time and can, and can be benefit from intentional practice in this art of waiting. Hanukkah and Advent give us that opportunity. And for both, Hanukkah and Advent, that expectant waiting involves action 
in our park. Well done. For the Jewish community, it involves tikkun olam, or repair of a broken world. A popular Hanukkah song was written by Peter Yarrow of Peter, Paul, and Mary in 1983. In it, he encourages activism to make the world a better place. Titled Light One Candle, he wrote the song as a call for peace and reconciliation. For the Christian community, the action in waiting for Christ's return is to be as Christ-like as possible to others. Presbyterian minister and author Friedrich Buchner writes, to wait for Christ to come in his fullness is not just a passive thing, a pious, prayerful, churchly thing. On the contrary, to wait for Christ to come in his fullness is above all else to act in Christ's stead as fully as we know how. With wish wishes for a season filled with light, joy, miracles, and gratitude, may you be cradled in hope, kept in joy, graced with peace, and swaddled in God's love this Advent season. Amen. Thank you. I'd like to invite our choir forward to join Wild and Dina and sing for us. Keep silent. Thank you. 
Our scripture reading this morning is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 9 to 13. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day, we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and holy parents and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may God so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and holy parent at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. So I see we have a couple of kiddos in the sanctuary today, and we don't traditionally have a children's story when we don't have church school, and we don't always have church school when it's a holiday weekend. However, since I see a couple of kiddos, I wonder if you would be willing to come up and help me with a little children's story. Would you guys come up? Come on up. You don't have to if you don't want to, it's cool. But if you want to, I would love to have Thank you for the kiddos of all ages who are joining me. So I would like you just to stand right up here in a sort of a straight line facing me. Just right here, wherever face to face, you're right there, perfect. Now, perfect, okay, nice straight line, excellent. So um, now you have certainly played this game before and we've actually played it here at church. So you may be familiar with the game Sign and Set. Yep, okay. Who can explain how we play? How do you play? Okay, and what happens if you do it when you're not supposed to? You're out. You're out. Okay. All right, that's pretty rough. So we're going to play Simon Said, but we're going to do it a little different because we're going to play Jesus Said. Do you remember playing this here before? You think so? Yeah. Okay. So there's a different rule because in Simon Says, if it's if you say Simon Says, do it, and you do it, you're in. And then if you don't say Simon Says, but they say do it, and you do it, then you're out. Do you think it's the same rules of Jesus Says? No. Good answer. Any guess how it might be different? Uh, maybe if you don't do it, Yes, if you don't do it, you get another chance. Excellent. <laughs> yep, it's the Jesus way. So let's just try this out. Ready? So Jesus says, do this. Jesus says, do this. Jesus says, do this. <laughs> All right, do this. Oh, you guys are good. All right, Jesus says, do this. Jesus says, do this. Jesus says, do this. Jesus says, keep going. Jesus says, keep going. Okay, stop. Oh, who stopped? <laughs> okay, are you out? Okay, you guys, Jesus says stop, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're not out, right? How many times do you think you get to do it the wrong way and Jesus says before you're out? A lot. A lot. As many times as you make a mistake, it's okay. You're still in when we play Jesus says. Thank you, everyone. Give our wonderful... <laughs> Advent time is a time that used to be a lot like Lent, which was a time sort of of solemnity. We were sad and serious, and we prepared for this big holiday in a very serious, sad way. We made sure we learned all the rules because people were preparing to be baptized at Christmas time or the new year. And so just like in Lent, when we get very focused on the rules and we fast and we pray and we give up chocolate and coffee and we make ourselves miserable for 40 days and nights, 
preparing for the resurrection of our Lord. Why anyone would want the resurrection after that kind of suffering, I don't know. No, but in all seriousness, it's a part of our spiritual practices. This one is one of the ways that we engage in our spiritual formation. And Advent used to be the same. And then over time, in the evolution of the church community, we started to realize that maybe in the midst of the darkness in the northern hemisphere, it wasn't so much more focusing on our suffering that we needed. It was more focusing on the advent of Christ's light in the world again. Because we already had enough suffering in the dark and the cold and the fear. And what we needed was a reconnection with that light. So it wasn't the rules that we needed so much as it was the grace. It wasn't the authority we needed so much as it was the law. And so this tradition was born of lighting Advent candles. We'll find that in the scripture anywhere. But the tradition was born, and we have carried it forward to help us celebrate that in the midst of these dark, dark days, the light continues to grow. And when the light shines in the darkness, Barbara telling us, and can hear something. I need to speak up. Oh, I need to speak up. In the light of these dark days, we need, I mean, we need to come closer to the but I don't want to come closer to the people around us. So, um, this passage that Nick just read for us is an interesting passage for this time of year. It's not very Christmassy per se, but many of the Advent passages are not. They tend to be more reflective and a little more Advent -y because of the original tradition. And there's even, however, a little not Thanksgiving as we should do today because it says, How? Can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Now, this is Paul, the apostle, writing to this church in Thessalonica. And you can imagine, go ahead and imagine, Paul writing this letter to this church here in North Madison. Now, here again, here's Paul speaking to me. In case you have any uh, question about your value in the world, how can we? Thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you. Now, notice Paul doesn't say, How can we thank our God for the joy we feel because you guys are pledging so much and you've done such a wonderful job in the stewardship campaign and you've been keeping all of the commandments so perfectly? He doesn't say that. He says, I thank God not because you're perfect and you do all the things right and follow all the rules. Paul says, I thank God because of the joy that we feel because of it. Now that's the whole point of that. It's not to get things perfect, it's not to get every box perfectly wrapped, or every bow perfectly done. We spent a lot of time making this all happen yesterday, and we really wanted it perfect for you. But in the end, when we stepped back, Laura said, I'm getting the chills, I'm feeling that magic. It wasn't that we had it perfect. It was that we wanted to be together in the spirit of this season in a way that we all could share in that moment. Because just in the way that Paul's world was a place that was very broken at the time, we live in a world that's very broken as well, don't we? And we all live with our own stuff, our own diagnoses, our own relationship burdens, our mental health concerns, our addictions, our difficult family relationships, our aging bodies, our deadlines, our all the things. The world is hard. And then we add the politics of it and the hunger. We add our financial burdens. We add the blessings and the complications of owning things, cars and homes and IRAs. <laughs> responsibilities, and the world gets a little dark. And then we have the weather. We've had beautiful flurries today, but it gets so cold at this time of year and dark. We wake up in the dark, and we go to sleep in the dark, and we think, why would the dark be in here? And that's what happens now. It's not ignoring the dark. It's embracing it. It's realizing that it is in the darkness that we see the light. In the full light of day, 
we don't see those twinkling sparkles that surprise us in the midst of the murky deep. Our passage talks about night and day, but it talks about night and day as a time for prayer. Night and day, we pray most earnestly, not that you'll be perfected, but that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. There's something lacking in all of our faith. It doesn't have to be perfect for Christmas to come. But this is a time of honesty. It's a time of acknowledgement. It's a time of you're taking stock. As we look over the years, it's been we prepare for the one ahead. It's a time for getting real. And um, those of you who live in old houses like ours, and I know some of you do, um, it gets really real this time of year, and all the critters start coming in, fine, <laughs> right? And the breezes get a little bit brisker around the edges of the windows and the doors, and you start to wonder if the roof's going to hold and if the paint's going to stay on. And, you start calling Peter Half and he tells you he's booked all the way through spring instead of to summer. <laughs> <laughs> and then the scripture tells you, nonetheless, may the Lord make you increase and abound, not in your perfection, but in your love. Love for one another and for us all, just as we abound in love for you. Paul's a little gritty. He's a little emotional, this guy. And he finishes with this prayer. May God so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before God, our holy parent, at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all the saints. Not that you get the rules right, but that you get the love right in all the simple, messy, quiet ways we love. And so we turn to the scripture of Mary Oliver, a modern beloved poet and prophet. And hear now these words. Dear Lord, I have swept and I have washed, but still nothing is shining as it should be for you. Under the sink, for example, is an uproar of mice. It is the season of their many children. What shall I do? And under the eaves and through the walls, the squirrels have gnawed their ragged entrances, but it is the season when they need shelter. So what shall I do? And the raccoon, the raccoon limps into the kitchen and opens the cupboard <laughs> while the dog snores. <laughs> the cat hugs the pillow. What shall I do? Beautiful is the new snow falling in the yard. And the fox he is staring boldly up the path to the door. And still, I believe you will come, Lord. You will. Then I speak to the fox, the sparrow, the lost dog, the shivering sea beast. Know that really, I I'm speaking to you. Whenever I say, as I do all morning and afternoon, come in. Come in. May we be welcomed into the arms and heart of God, and may we as well open ours and invite all who need to come. Let's be here. And I invite our choir back here for Chancel to sing for us about the people who are in darkness. Yes.
Sí. Now is the time that we share our joys and concerns during our service when we speak aloud our prayer requests amongst us. I do have some here. Are there any others that are uh, being written? have a uh, concern from Scott prayers for Peggy a pesky kidney stone hit her Thanksgiving Eve she is home and resting still a good bit of pain we have prayers for her thank you Scott we also have a joy uh, I guess out of the mouths of babes um, Ellie M it is snowing <laughs> We love seeing the sky remind us to be quiet, to quiet down in patient waiting for baby Jesus. And some other thoughts, prayers for those that find holidays difficult. I find them magical. A good friend reminds me of the slogan, be still. I suggest you slow down this season and be grateful for all that we have, the friends, 
that share the magic of this holiday. Please join me in a minute of silent prayer as we lift up the joys and concerns we have shared this morning, as well as those that are unspoken in our hearts. As we continue in our prayer, I also would like to point out to you that in your pews, many of you have a prayer shawl. And while we do have blessing blankets for your warmth, these prayer shawls are actually for your blessing. So if you have one near you and you'd like to touch it, um, or if you see one that no one's near and you'd like to just put a hand out toward it, we're also gonna bless our prayer shawls this morning. We're gonna bless the prayer shawls with a blessing um, that has been used in other churches and that we found very meaningful and will carry us through our Advent theme. And here is our blessing. So let us be in a spirit of prayer together. May God's grace be upon these shawls, warming, comforting, enfolding, and embracing. May this mantle be a safe haven a sacred place of security and well-being, sustaining and embracing in good times as well as difficult ones. May the one who receives this shawl be cradled in hope, kept in joy, graced with peace, and swaddled in God's love. Amen. Amen. Now you may continue to hold on to those as we continue into the rest of our prayer or put them back, whichever is comfortable for you. But let us continue. Holy One, we thank you for the gift of your embrace, the ways you enfold us, the ways you swaddle us in your love. Sometimes we may fight against the swaddle, struggling to break free. But sometimes, sometimes we long to feel you holding us even tighter. Wherever each of us is this morning, God, we thank you for your presence here with us. Help us to feel you, to feel you resisting when we push too hard, to feel your warm, tender, strong embrace when we are coming apart. And help us, God, also to remember that you have given us arms with which we may reach out, and hearts and voices and eyes and minds with which we may embrace one another. And so in this time of embracing, of swaddling new beginnings, of new birth, we ask you, God, to bear in us anew. Bear in us anew. The ability to be held the dark parts of us, the broken parts of us, the parts we hide, the parts we're ashamed of, and to be held. The parts we celebrate, the parts that get large and boisterous and excited, and to be held in the quiet and in the raucous, beautiful caroling. To be held in the dark of night, among the blinking stars, and to be held in the dawn of morning, in the cold, clear light of new day. Let us, God, be held so we may reach out and hold. Let us be present in our enfleshedness, in all of its imperfections, and see them as beautiful, because we know you sent your son to be enfleshed in this human life of its weird smells and squishy bits and messiness and hunger, its fear and longing and the swells of its love, the brokenheartedness of its betrayal and the pain of its hope. You sent yourself 
to live among us, within us, around us, among us. And when your son, having been born and lived this life, departed from us, his prayer for us was only that we might be again united, one in union with one another and with you. So we pray for ourselves, O oh God, and for all the world, the prayer that he prayed for us, that we might all be one. And knowing that you've heard all the prayers we've lifted up aloud and those we've held swaddled tightly in our hearts, we also pray the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. And I'd like to invite Roberta forward to offer us our mission moment from Columbus House, about Columbus House. So, Roberta. Oops. So many of you know that I've been interested and very active with um, Columbus House. And you probably don't know why or how I started with Columbus House. And it was by a personal invitation from Del Amaro, who invited me to come and make breakfast. And that was 20 years ago in November. So, this, <clears throat> so the past, what, 21 months has been particularly difficult for me to be able to provide and serve at Columbus House. But we found ways, very clever ways. Last year, we provided 100, 101 ba bags of with toiletries in it and um, 131 Dunkin' Donut gift cards. And then there were additional donations, cash donations and food donations where we were able to provide the kitchen, which serves about a 250 people a day. Um, the little kitchen we all know is serving people in several locations throughout um, New Haven. And we were able to provide them with some groceries to, to supplement their uh, the work that they were doing in the kitchen. And then we kind of went quiet. And luckily we were invited, to, several of us were invited to go and provide gardening <laughs> um, expertise. And so we we'd, uh, cleaned up three of their gardens and um, hopefully we'll resume that in the spring. So now we're in the process of negotiating what we're going to be doing in December, um, this month, uh, December, um, for Columbus House. And we've decided to which the whole plan isn't done yet, but the first thing is because we need to start shopping early is we're going to go back to our tradition of doing wrapped gifts, the warm hats, gloves, scarves, and socks, warm socks. Um, because there's about, um, the, uh, the clients are, are still not housed in Columbus House. They're at a hotel, thanks to the COVID funding, they've been able to continue to extend them at least through February. So we're gonna be providing wrapped gifts and there's a lot more people to do that for. And there are other, organizations that are also doing the same, but we hope to give everyone a chance to have a little merrier Christmas with our help. So um, by December 10th, um, uh, Peter, will, Peter will have our boxes up out here. And then we'll also be collecting the, the beloved Dunkin' Donut cards in $10 increments. Okay, and Scott is our captain. The, Scott Conover will be collect, helping me collect those. And then we have to figure out when and how we're gonna move them into New Haven. So, so anyways, we just, if you could, um, Hats, gloves, scarves, warm socks, and it mark them men, women, and size if it matters, if it makes sense. Like red scarves, that could go for anybody, uh, but women's tiny uh, mittens might need to need, have some. And our transgender and non-binary friends. Well, that's, well, that's why we're, there's a whole bunch of things that can cover either way. Um, so with that, I'd just like to thank you. And I also forgot one little announcement earlier, and that is Linda, if you signed up after last Sunday, Linda has cookie labels here today. So if you want to come pick up your or cookies, or if you decide to make more than you did last time. Okay. So that's how I was covering the transgender okay, because I didn't have to label them at all. Okay. Thanks everyone. Thanks, Roberta. I should never have doubted. And speaking of those I never doubt, we'd like to invite Miles and the Circle Rounders forward to sing Miles' original song, Emmanuel, which of course means God with us.
You know, there's something very magical about the first snowfall. I'm kind of a tropical weather guy myself. <laughs> Palm trees, beaches, you know, warms. But when the first snow comes, I'm not sure what it is. It could be, you know, the, the confluence of uh, Advent and Hanukkah, or it could just be as simple as presenting a song I wrote to you guys. I'm going to grab my guitar and we'll get going. Banjo is in the microphone. And the four of us didn't have a chance to uh, rehearse until 8 30 this morning. Uh, I'm going to thank you for that. And then I forgot who I was playing with. You know, playing with, with my wife and, and with uh, Michael and Anne is, is a treat for me. And after one playing, one rehearsal, we're like, that works. <laughs> it works. Anyway, uh, the name of the song is Emmanuel, and I was always intrigued by that name. Because I know, I know that uh, boy, you guys want me to sing or sing. Don't, <laughs> they just really want me. I'm going to do a one. Watch the grin on their face. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, I, I hate wearing. But anyway, um, I wanted to just uh, say a little bit about the, the tune and, and the genesis of it. Uh, as I'm sure many of you know, uh, I'm not sure if it's Aramaic or Hebrew or what. Uh, but the but the word of the name Emmanuel means God with us. And I, last year around this time, I got in my head I want to write a Christmas carol, and, and never having done so. And as soon as I made the decision to do it about Emmanuel, God with us, the song basically wrote itself. Um, hope you like it. Oh, and I just want to uh, uh, dedicate the song to a very good friend of ours. It's not very well. He's in the hospital with cancer. His name is Jeff Reitmeyer. He's a beautiful guy, and uh, we, we spent a lot of time with him recently. And uh, we both feel, he and I both feel very rich uh, by having done that. Anyway, Emmanuel. Go.
Wonderful. So please come and look forward to seeing you then. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs>